Hi, this is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. Let's talk about the number one addiction and its cost on the United States of America. The number one addiction in the United States of America is not methamphetamine, it's not uh, cocaine, it's not even opioids, it's not even smoking. No, the number one addiction in the United States that's costing us the most amount of money is our addiction to ultra-processed foods. When you look at this chart, which shows the number of ingredients that go into ultra-processed food, you see that it's been increasing dramatically over the last few decades. Guess what also has been increasing dramatically during the last few decades? Diabetes and obesity. Now, why is this stuff so popular? Because it's cheap. And why is it cheap? Because of the sick psychopathic system that allows all the ingredients that go into ultra processed foods to be heavily subsidized by the federal government. The oils, the grains, sugar, wheat, the corn, all this stuff is subsidized by your tax dollars. As a result, the cost of these ingredients is very low. And as a result, they're able to create very tasty stuff that will not nourish you at very low cost and they get you addicted to it they create big food creates what they call this wonderful bliss point where the food melts in your mouth creates a sensation and then they add in sugar to get you completely addicted to it and you add in all these ingredients together and you know they've got a ready audience huh Gosh, it kind of sounds like Big Tobacco. Well, surprise, surprise, Big Tobacco moved from tobacco products to big food, ultra-processed food. See, back in the 1960s when I was born, uh, about half the population, half the adults in this country smoked. And then the Surgeon General, I mean, after decades of data, came out showing this direct link between lung cancer and heart, and heart disease and smoking. Finally, the Surgeon General took it seriously and put a warning on the cigarette packages. And when people started really, when the government said, hey, smoking is bad, a lot of people quit. I mean, from half the population down to about 10%. I mean, when you, if you're still smoking today, you're committed to that habit. I mean, when I started smoking when I was a kid, when I was 16, 17 years old in North Carolina, um, cigarettes were less than 50 cents a pack. You could smoke on airplanes. You could smoke at school. You know, there was, you know it was easy to smoke. Now it's gotten very difficult and cigarettes are $10 a pack. I mean, if you really want to smoke, you're committed. So, you know, and I thankfully quit over 15 years ago. So I'm, you know, I, I feel their pain in their quitting, but it is what it is. I understand it. But when you look at where, you know, these guys, when they saw the sinking ship and they could no longer hide, and, and guess how big tobacco hid for all those years? How did they manage to stay afloat despite the mountains of evidence that showed that smoking caused lung cancer. They got the best science that money could buy. It was amazing how cheap they could buy off scientists that were more than willing to put out studies saying, though well, there's absolutely no evidence or there's no definitive evidence or you know, we're kind of not sure if smoking causes cancer and they obscured it for decades. And the more they obscured it and the more studies they threw at it, the more they could convince legislators not to take it seriously and believe it or not our government subsidized tobacco sales and growth and we kept the prices artificially low kind of sounds like big food today same playbook same people just different product and it has the same horrible effect on people's health i mean big food ultra processed food is the big tobacco of today when you really get down to it you know, you're seeing the same type of advertising. You see them putting out studies. They keep buying off scientists saying that all oh, sugar may or may not be that harmful to you. And really, you know, what my favorite is when they keep attacking you. 
They say, look, the reason why America's fat and diabetic is because they're just not moving enough. They're playing too many video games. It has nothing to do with our food. And this is the psychopathic system that we keep seeing. They keep obscuring the fact that they're just putting out a dangerous product that's doing nothing for people's health and costing us money. And you would think, oh gosh, where's in the world is big medicine to fight this? Why aren't they on our side? Frankly, they have a wonderful cash cow in this. See, insurance is capped because of Obamacare. They can only make 15% profits each year. So the only way they can make more money is to expand their customer base, to get more people spending more money on health care. And chronic diseases like type 2 diabetes are a cash cow for them because the patient doesn't die overnight. They lose, they, it's a slow chronic disease. Okay, sure it costs you your eyesight. Yeah, it may cost you your leg. Sure, it makes you feel horrible and causes all sorts of aches and pains, but it doesn't kill you. As a result, you stay dependent on the medical system. The medical system doesn't really, frankly, care that much about your health. They will take care of your acute diseases. You know, when you've got an appendicitis, they take care of it. When you've got a broken leg, they take care of it. When they're trying to get healthy, they're silent. Absolutely crickets constantly when it comes to this. Because if they, frankly, if they were telling the truth, they'd be telling you, stay away from the ultra processed food. But how many people have heard that message from their doctor? And as a result, we've gotten completely addicted to cheap, ultra processed food. Then it's killing us and it's costing us a trillion dollars in healthcare dollars. And nobody cares. Nobody is going to come to your rescue. You're going to have to figure it out for yourself. And you can say, well, you know, what do the studies say and what does the science say? And frankly, you know, Americans are really good about following government recommendations. We followed the food pyramid. We got rid of meat. We got, you know, started using vegetable oils. You can look at, you know, everything that, you know, we've been doing, but what has happened since we've been following the government regulations? Our health has been going downhill. Yet we're still following them because that's what the government says. That's what the experts say. And when you realize that the system is psychopathic and not looking after your health, you can realize, I got to quit doing it. And it's not easy. Frankly, I don't expect many people to be able to listen to this message and say, yeah, I'm going to make a change. I mean, I, and I know because look, I'm one of these guys who used to smoke and, you know, bought into the, you know, bad science, trying to put off an inevitable thing that I knew I needed to do, which was to quit. And finally the cost got too high and I quit. And I know what it's like to give up the ultra processed food and to turn your back on government food guidelines because I was terrified when I went low carb, thinking that, oh my God, I'm either going to do wonderful things for my health or I'm going to die. And I don't frankly know which. I had to go out on faith. So I feel your pain. I know what you're going through. But when you look at the preponderance of the evidence and you realize, when you really internalize deep down and you realize that these guys, the, they may not be psychopaths individually. You know, your member of Congress may not be a psychopath. They could be, but they may not be. But they're part of a psychopathic system that subsidizes cheap, unhealthy food that is destroying this country, costing us over a trillion dollars a year in the care of type 2 diabetics and all the obesity. And frankly, just look around. Look at the number of unhealthy people that you see at the store every single day and realizing that they're getting 70% of their calories from ultra processed food and it's killing them. Yet we're not doing anything about it. Nobody anywhere in the healthcare system is lifting a finger to solve the problem. Frankly, when it comes to this fight for health, you are on your own. The only one that can help you is you. You get to ultimately make the decisions that are going to be 
part of your healthcare journey. If you want to get healthy, just switch to single ingredient foods and dump the junk food. Uh, yeah, it's a little painful to go through your cupboards and clear out all the junk and throw it away. But I've done it. I know other people that have done it. And it makes all the difference in the world. I know. I was a 50-year-old guy who was going blind and weighed 300 pounds. I'm now 60, best shape of my life, and I'm not blind. And I'm no longer a type 2 diabetic and I'm healthier than I've ever been. It's possible to do. This is Kirk, the Bariatric Carnivore. If you like this message, please hit the like and subscribe button. Please join us in our community for better health. And I hope more of you just get the courage to dump the junk food, end your addiction, and become healthy. I've tried to put out a new message every single workday. I will talk to you soon.